Well, most of you probably are already talking of the GTX 1660 non-TI, my review of that graphics card still isn't out yet. But I do have another excuse this time around too. Actually my order has been out for a while now, but apparently the shop I ordered it from is facing some delays. So this is why I'm bringing you something similar today. Today we are taking another look at the GTX 1660 Ti and in fact I'll be overclocking it and we'll show you how I did it and what settings I used. Now don't mix up the 1660 Ti with the non-Ti version. Hopefully I'll have a video of the 1660 up in the next few days. With overclocking how much free performance can there be squeezed out? To be honest I didn't expect this graphics card to overclock that well. I was positively surprised. But how much faster does this thing actually get after my special treatment? You'll find out shortly. The card in question today is named Gigabyte GTX 1660 Ti OC6G. Actually it's a pretty good GPU even though I don't really like the design choices all too much and I in fact really dislike that plastic backplate, something I already complained about in my main review of this card. Whether or not this bad insulating backplate out of plastic will cause problems with our overclock, you'll soon find out. As always I'd like to remind you, the following steps I'm about to show you can more or less be applied to any GTX 1660 Ti out there. Maybe not completely, but with minor adjustments, be it reducing or increasing clock speeds, your 1660 Ti should be stable with a similar overclock. Something I already did notice in my main review is the fact this GTX Turing card, just like the RTX 2060, is equipped with GDDR6 video memory. It is however clocked noticeably lower on the 1660 Ti. I don't know about you, but I might be smelling something here. It could very well be an artificial slowdown of the 1660 Ti in order for the performance gap between the RTX 2060 and 1660 Ti to get wider. But I could be totally wrong as well. One thing's for sure, I could easily increase the memory clock. Just like the last times I'm using the MSI Afterburner tool to overclock, since most of you like that one best. The power and temp limits all need to go to their max, then then I increase the GPU clock by 135 MHz and add a whopping 1000 MHz to the memory. At this point you could adjust the fan curve or fan speed, but I didn't necessarily have to do that and I really didn't want a higher noise level. Now when comparing the GPU clock before and after applying the overclock, there certainly is a nice improvement noticeable. Before I touched any dials, the clock was around 1905 MHz most of the time and with the overclock it's at 2055 megahertz and even that memory clock should help a bit with performance. But enough of me rambling, here are the benchmarks.
Now, as always, it needs to be said, overclocking, especially with graphics cards, is not a cure-all wonder. Let's say a game was totally unplayable. Then overclocking would certainly improve the situation a little bit, but it wouldn't do any wonders. Luckily, we are far from unplayable here. A GTX 1660 Ti is very capable of delivering great frame rates. That's at resolutions 1080p as well as at 1440p. That is at maxed out graphics settings, by the way. But fair enough, in a few game titles such as the two Raider games, the 1660 Ti does struggle a bit. By that I mean at 1440p. At 1080p almost every game you throw at this card runs smoothly. But this is what it's all about today. Thanks to overclocking we can unlock even more performance, for free. And for the most part we do see some nice performance gains. But of course you shouldn't have your hopes up too high. It's wiser to be content with the gains we are already getting. More is only a nice bonus. Although in a couple of games like Battlefield 5 for instance, after overclocking, we do see slightly worse 1% lows. There are similar symptoms in Rise of the Tomb Raider too. Who knows, I maybe pushed my overclock a bit too far and I might would have to lower the GPU and or memory clock slightly. But most games actually do show good improvements when it comes down to the 1% low minimum. And in the hours of testing, I didn't encounter any stability issues. None. Since we've increased the power limit by 25%, we have to expect a higher power draw, which is exactly the case. 220 watts in my case for the whole system as always is not a bad result though in my opinion. I'm happy with the power consumption and would you look at that, at first glance it does appear that plastic backplate does have a negative effect on the temperature. Most will agree with me, this is one really absurd idea by Gigabyte. But sure, not all of you care, it's plastic, that's fine. But I stand behind my opinion and find the use of a backplate out of plastic really really stupid. Sorry, but I just had to say it out loud. Before going for something like this, I'd rather prefer having no backplate at all. But to be fair, it needs to be said, 71 degrees are not critical whatsoever. And should you still be concerned about the temperature, well then you still could increase the fan speed. We'd surely be back into the 60s somewhere temperature wise. At the end of the day, I can only say the same thing over and over again, overclocking doesn't do wonders. But if you can and want to invest some time, there is a nice reward to be claimed. There is a nice performance boost to be had. You might as well try out the settings I used. Should your 1660 Ti crash, freeze or display an entertaining show of artifacts and stars with those? Do not worry, just try again with slightly lower settings and continue doing that until you find the point of rock solid stability. There for sure are 1660 Ti's out there that clock even higher than mine does. And yeah, that's about all I have to say here, except that overclocking has been a blast with this GPU. And hopefully you did have a blast watching my video too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching.